What is up, Gig Nation? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be doing some deliveries in a new market. That's right, gonna be testing out Jacksonville, Florida. And I haven't really told anybody yet, but I just recently moved across the country. That's right, I sold everything that I owned in Seattle and drove to Jacksonville, Florida. So we're gonna be seeing what the market looks like here when you're delivering with Uber Eats, if you can actually make good money here. So I've been sitting here, I'm in my living room with the app on. I've watched a few orders pop up, for those of you that don't know, Jacksonville is absolutely huge. It's just massive as far as square footage goes. So I'm definitely seeing a few pop up that are long distance. Even though the payout's decent, I don't really wanna be driving that much. Fortunately, I do live in a pretty popular, busy area with a lot of restaurants. So I'm hoping I get some uh, deliveries that come up here that are shorter distance because I am driving the FJ Cruiser right now and that gets closer to like 15 miles per gallon. Uh, so I'm trying to keep that cost as low as possible with driving. The gas is cheaper here. I definitely appreciate that. I was paying over $4 a gallon in Seattle, and now it's closer to $3 a gallon, which is going to help on the expenses. And real quick, this video is brought to you guys by Maestro. This app helps you maximize your profits with delivery, with ride sharing. Traditionally, they were for Lyft and Uber. They recently added DoorDash. I'm going to let you guys know how you can use this app to maximize your earnings going forward and how to get that free trial to try it out yourself. Now, there's been a lot of pretty interesting articles that have popped up related to the food delivery space. So I'm gonna go into a couple of those real quick while I'm waiting for some offers to pop up and then I'll show you the offers on my screen that I'm getting as they come in. Uh, but the first one, I thought this was pretty great here. Uh, essentially, if you live in Indianapolis and you order food from DoorDash, your delivery driver may actually be an ESPN commentator. And that's because Dan Dakich, he's an ESPN radio host who has been invited on a lot in the past. He's currently out there delivering for DoorDash. Now he mentions uh, in the article the reason why he got started in this is because he had a pretty big gambling loss in March Madness and he wanted to teach himself the value of the dollar. Uh, so he went ahead and hopped on there. He heard from his son or, or his nephew, I believe it was, that they were making $25 an hour with Grubhub. And, you know, Grubhub's got the wait list, so I think he hopped on DoorDash and he said he's actually enjoying it. So he's kind of just kept up, kept delivering and he talks about it on his show every now and then. And the next story we have here is from Uber uh, CEO uh, and it's he's actually upset right now because what he's seen uh, for Uber, for Uber drivers uh, and passengers is that the wait time for pickup with the passengers is too long uh, and the, the cost is too expensive. Essentially, there's a lot of demand for rides right now and not enough drivers out there. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but anytime I see the Uber CEO pissed off and you know the reason behind that being that drivers are making more, it actually makes me happy. Uh, you know, I wish we lived in a world where uh, corporate Uber could honestly be happy about drivers earning more, uh, but it seems like every time they t talk about you know drivers earning more, they're either faking, it's kind of a disingenuous happiness, or, or they're actually mad about it because they think it's a supply and demand imbalance. Uh, so Uber has said that they're doing a one-time $250 million spend to bring drivers back on the road. You know, they like to hook you in with those bonuses and then keep you in the app, keep you, you know, entertained and gamified in that app so that, you know, while your earnings decrease after that, you know, bonus gets kind of ironed out, you're still in the app, you're still giving rides. But let's get back into delivering with Uber Eats. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple of these different offers that have popped up. I had one for about five or six bucks uh, and it wanted to take me like 13 miles. That was an automatic decline. And the next offer that popped up actually, you know, was pretty tempting. I almost took it uh, and I, maybe I should have. It was actually a $14 offer, but it was a 15 mile drive. And, you know, judging by with the driving that I have done since I've gotten here, uh, it's about a 20 minute drive with the drive alone, uh, not to mention, uh, you know, the waiting time at the restaurant. So I'm looking at uh, about an hour to do this delivery, 14 bucks, um, you know, assuming that I come out with a tip at the end. It's not a bad payout, but it's not uh, a great payout. And, you know, I, I will say that maybe I'm spoiled having been delivering in Seattle for so long uh, because I got to be really picky with the orders that I picked up, only taking stuff that was really close and kind of just, you know, cherry picking stuff because there's so many people uh, ordering food from these apps in Seattle and there's so much money with all the uh, people working in tech that it was really easy to just uh, you know, only select the good payouts and stick to a very specific region. So after about 20, 30 minutes of waiting around, I finally got the right offer coming my way. I had to do quite a bit of declining. 
There's a couple you know, orders that just did not meet my criteria, but now I'm picking one up that's pretty close by. I'm gonna go hop in the car and show you guys what that looks like. Before I get into that, let me just shout out Maestro real quick. They are sponsoring this video, uh, and I would definitely recommend checking out their tool. You can get a free trial for two weeks on their website when you download the app. And essentially what it does is it allows you to filter out the rides and the offers that are low paying that you don't want and easily switch between apps. Now, traditionally it's been for Lyft and Uber drivers, but they recently added DoorDash to their platform. Uh, so if you want, you know, to kind of just set your criteria and filter it automatically using the app, I would recommend trying that out, taking advantage of the free trial. And I would recommend doing some accounting work, essentially figure out what the cost of the app is, how much you increased your earnings over that two week period uh, and seeing if it's going to pay for itself. If it does, it makes sense. If not, well, then you had a free trial where you maximize your earnings and made a little bit more income during that two week period. So I'm just about to pull up to the restaurant here and it is less than a mile away from my house. This is the ideal restaurant to pick up from. And then I'm just a couple of miles away from this customer to drop off. All right, so first order I got picked up from the Loop restaurant. I got it in here, it's in my Arctic cooler. I actually didn't bring uh, any of my heat bags with me when I made the trip, but that's a super insulated cooler. So I think it'll work just fine as a heat bag. First things, first impressions that I'm noticing is uh, one, it wasn't the quickest restaurant. I'm not going to, you know, make an assumption that all restaurants here are going to be slow. Uh, and it wasn't necessarily like super slow or anything. It just wasn't super fast. And when I was in Seattle, a lot of restaurants were very quick. I noticed that the Uber Eats algorithm just kind of had it down on the timeline. So I would show up uh, and stuff would be ready. Uh, this one took a little bit longer, nothing too crazy. Uh, driving here is definitely different, uh, more aggressive drivers. At first, uh, when I first got here, I was just, my plan was to just stay out of people's way. And then I realized that uh, it's mostly around stoplights and people just do not want you uh, stopping too soon if the light's yellow or you know not going fast enough because if you get stuck at a light here, it can take like five minutes sometimes. You're just always driving on these like highways with stoplights and uh, the lights are really long. So uh, you just gotta learn that. That's kind of the one thing that I picked up on and uh, now that I know that I'm kind of good to go on driving. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this off uh, at the customer's address and then uh, I got a Grubhub shift starting at 5.30. So I'm gonna check that out and see if any more orders come in through Uber Eats. All right, so the first order was a successful delivery. While I was dropping that off, I got pinged for another order, $18. It's a double pickup. So I'm dropping off at two separate locations. It's about 14 miles, so a little bit longer, but I felt like for 18 bucks, it was probably worth it. We'll find out, you know, it's getting to be that, that hour when traffic might be picking up a little bit. So we'll see uh, how this one pans out. I will check in with you guys. All right, so I just pulled back up to my apartment and I wanna do a quick recap of my earnings today. If I pull up the Uber Eats app, it shows that I made about 21 bucks. Still expecting one more tip to come in, so it should round out closer to 24, 25. And I did have that Grubhub uh, one hour long block where I only had time for one delivery. It was towards uh, the end of that double Uber Eats delivery. It kind of popped up when I was still doing it, but it was in the same direction. So I picked that up. It was about 20 bucks for going five miles. Honestly, the pay was uh, better than I expected. And I had some other ones pop up on the way home that all averaged, uh, you know, above $10 an order through Uber Eats. Uh, there was definitely some other attractive orders that I wasn't able to pick up closer to the $14, $15 range. I will say that I underestimated this market and it's coming in a lot better than what I expected. I always thought that in Seattle, uh, I was, you know, doing better than our other markets because of what people said in my comments. Like they couldn't believe how much I was earning. I assumed that other markets were paying less, but so far on this very small sample size, the earnings look really good. Uh, once again, that's a small sample size, so I don't really know. I'm gonna have to keep going and let you guys know, keep you updated how those earnings go. And I also don't know how much of this has to do with the supply and demand issue with drivers out there. After all, I have not driven in Seattle for a while, so for all I know, prices uh, and payouts for drivers are getting higher there as well. Um, but, you know, I just will say initial judgment call is earnings are very good and I'm very happy about that. Uh, once again, check out that Maestro app to help you, you know, only select the highest paying orders. It makes your job easier when you're driving out there on the road and orders are, orders are popping up. Uh, you don't want to, you know, not know what you're getting into. You don't want to take your eyes off the road. So when you have that criteria set and the app can, you know, uh, you know, help you out and get you those orders coming your way. Uh, it's going to make your life easier and it's going to increase your earnings. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel.